four point seven four out of ten on my enemy list. Come on, people. Every now and then, well, often, often, we'll just we'll we'll reiterate that often in uh, my anime viewing experience, do I run into the situation where I enjoy something and it seems like nobody else does? <laughs> but hey, that's that's technically what kind of built the Otaku Spirit anime cast, our podcast, and built our community on was this idea of giving everything a chance and not I don't blame people honestly for quickly uh putting some down voting on idols as a series which is currently airing in the winter 2021 season just based on appearance like just look at that book cover and you're like ah, I, 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 I don't want this watch the first few minutes of it and eh, eh, no don't want this but <laughs> to give it like less than hentai levels of scoring here is is uh is it hurts. <laughs> like I said, I, I technically had the same effect with idols. I I fired up the first episode. I was trying to get caught up on a lot of other stuff. I I honestly was like, I'm gonna click, I'm gonna skim through this first episode, and unless something pops up and grabs my face, I'm probably just gonna say yeah, I won't even bother doing a first impression on it. But I, I, I think I caught like a quick glimpse of uh, Ami, who was one of the characters, booking a place and everybody freaking out and tell her not to do it. And I, it, I for some reason, got a chuckle out of me. And I'm like, oh, okay, hold on. <laughs> Go back to the beginning. We're watching the first episode. We're going to give this a shot. And I'm actually really glad I did. But yeah, I, I've watched three, maybe four episodes of Idol at the moment, and I've and they're only eight minutes each episode. And if you take off like the minute and a half for the opening and ending, it's technically only about five minutes of actual show. But of course, the quirk and like I said, the reason why a lot of people probably shut this off very quickly is it's doing two things that I think are like the cardinal sins of anime. The first cardinal sin is you don't use CGI, especially fully CGI. That's just a cardinal sin. You do not do that. And if you do that, you better have a really awesome show or people are going to hate you. I think mean, things like Nice Zedonia and stuff are like those ones that kind of barely skim past the 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 threats of anger that, that usually come with, with using full CGI. But the second cardinal sin is motion capture. Rotoscoping, rotoscoping, motion capture, all those kind of things. Anything that takes the pen away from the hand of the drawer and puts it into a machine to watch an actual physical human being, that's not anime. <laughs> so it had those two things, those two cardinal sins applied to it. And I think that's the reason why a lot of people probably shut off on it. And that was a reason that I really wasn't going to expect much out of it. But I think with the advent of things like VTubers and stuff, I think people are a little more accepting of it now than ever before. But I still think it's something that a lot of these studios are trying to capture in order to avoid animation, actually, actually capture these seiyus actually physically acting out, which technically does create the conundrum of the actor versus voice actor. Because I do believe those are two different things. That's like in Hollywood, you can't really expect a Hollywood physical actor, live action actor to do a good job voicing a character in an animated series. It's similarly the back. I I would think it's going to be similar the other way around is can you really expect these seiyus to physically act out their role as well? And it's definitely not going to be a thing for most situations. It, it works for comedy, but not... I don't expect to see Rhea Kajimia, or I wouldn't expect, uh, what's the voice of Goku from Dragon Ball Z at this point? I don't expect her to <laughs> start doing karate and stuff as Goku with motion capture, but as a comedy, I think it technically is in that gray area. I think it works. it's where it works. But anyways, all that stuff aside, 
I think it as a mocap CGI show still technically works decently well because of two things. Because a while back we had a show similar to this that was doing mocap, uh, kind of a, a mocap skit, uh, skit comedy thing where they were in a room and they were acting out just a skit comedy. And it didn't work there. And one of the main things, one, the, the animation and capture wasn't as good as this one. This one actually did, they did very good on it. And two, they had an open mic. It was almost like they had a single mic hanging down in the middle of the room and everybody's voice was bouncing off walls and hitting that thing, that mic, and it just sounded very terrible. And me being <laughs> not very professional, especially early on with our podcast and stuff, I was like, man, I could do a better job than that. And I think that's because they had them and actually in the room talking and they had to have this microphone pick everybody up. Whereas this one, I think, I'm not sure if they all had actual mics with them or if they just post-recorded the audio after doing the mocap of the characters themselves. And they do have a lot of different angles shots. It's not just one shot of the room they're in. It's multiple angles. And I guess to give people the idea of what the story is, it's basically four idols who are starting out and basically the difficulty they run into starting out as idols plus the comedy of such a feat. And it mostly just the comedy of becoming an idol. And it visually looks okay. They don't cut frames, so the CGI is smooth. It the character designs are uh, okay. It, there's there's there, I would make different choices in certain proportions and stuff, but I think overall they look great. They're very cute. Um, the Seiyus are doing a fantastic job with it. Their their motion is good. The mocap and how they move around is is good. I think everything's going good for it in the visual department, even though, yes, I prefer hand-drawn animation versus CGI, but we're talking about this show in particular. What ended up grabbing me was the dry humor in the end, though. It was, it's like I could, I'm watching this episode, and I'm like, all this stuff I can throw away. I don't, I don't mind. I can do with or without any of this stuff, but it was the moment that they started kind of getting in the humor this very dry humor, that's where it grabbed me. And I'm like, okay, I laughed. You got me to laugh several times. I'm going to keep watching this show. And I think over the four episodes, like I said, not a big investment. We're talking about, I maybe watched 15 or 20 minutes worth of a show. And I laughed several times. And I and I, I do think it's a show that shouldn't be based off appearance for the, uh, don't, 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 don't judge the book by its cover. I'll just say that. Give it a shot. Watch a couple episodes. It skip the intro and outro if you want to. Just check out the actual show itself, and give it a shot. I think it is actually a really funny show, especially if you like dry humor. This is idea that they'll just be talking and suddenly, you know, the punchline happens and they all kind of look in a in a silent room. It's that kind of humor that I really do like with it. Um, they had one full episode where the idea was they were running into excuses people gave for not going to their concerts. And every time an excuse was brought up that somebody gave them, they would cut to like a full shot of the room and everybody would repeat the same line about like, oh yeah, your health is important. And it would just have like health is important. And at the very end of it, she decides to reveal to her neighbor, uh, the main girl, Ina, or supposed to, supposed to be the leader. Uh, she goes to reveal to her neighbor that she's going to become an idol because she hasn't told anybody. And then when she comes back in. She's like, I told her, everybody, I told him, I told him I'm an, I'm an idol. And they're like, so is he coming to the concert? And she's like, oh, no, he has to go to a funeral that day or has to go uh, go to, you know, visit their their uh, gravestone or whatever. And they're like, oh, yeah, ancestry or something like that is important. And it's got the little title on there. It was really cute. And I and I have been thoroughly enjoying it. I guess it's an extremely long video for me to explain to you uh, 15 minutes worth of anime that I watched and why I watched it. And it's just basically me sitting here defending it. <laughs> but... I, I hope somewhere in this, it, it, it really is more than just a discussion of idols, really. This episode ended up turning into me talking about animation in general and, and not really judging a book by its cover in the end. So I hope you guys got some interesting information there about how I think and how I go about choosing my shows and, and why I get past that, I guess, my own personal blocks that I put up when I first go to watch a show. And if the show itself sounds interesting to you, definitely go check it out. But 
I hope you guys enjoyed this first impressions of idols that turned into just a discussion about animation in general. Uh, again, as you, if you like this video, definitely give us a like, leave a comment, let us, let me know if you gave it a shot, what maybe it didn't work for you. Let me know and, uh, subscribe if you can, but I hope you guys enjoy this video and y'all take care.